Lord, to touch today. God, we come to this part of the service this morning. God, we lift our eyes and our hearts and our hands toward you. Asking you, Lord, to touch God in this house today. Minister, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lift us up today, God. Encourage us, Lord. Strengthen us, God, as we worship you this morning. In spirit and in truth, God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God, we love you today. We give you glory and honor and praise for all that you are, God. Just touch the house this morning. Let your presence be real in this place, God, like never before. God, we come on off of the revival today, but God, the revival can Continue to flow in this house, God. In Jesus' name, Lord. God, we love you this morning. I praise you this morning. God, for who you are today, I give you glory and honor and praise today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Turn around to your neighbor in front of you and behind you and tell them it's good to have them in church this morning. Amen. Get in and let's worship the Lord today.
in that book, amen, had already been called of God. He had been sent to rebuild the walls. He'd been given his marching orders and he had got to where he was beginning to work and he was starting down the journey to rebuild the walls. And all of a sudden the enemy began to come his way and every obstacle that could possibly come against him was coming his way. Amen. They were trying to stop everything because they uh, they didn't want to see those walls rebuilt. They didn't want to see Jerusalem back to the way that it was. You know what? The enemy this morning doesn't want to see your life the way that God intends for it to be. The enemy doesn't want to cover uh, all the things that, that, that God wants for you to get to you. So he's doing everything he can to stop you. Amen. On to discourage you and to tear you down. But in the middle of it all, Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. What kept him going was knowing that this is my call. This is my purpose. Amen. You have us been preached all week around here. You've got a purpose this morning. Amen. Let God be your joy. Let him be your strength. Let him be your help. Let him be your power. Amen. David said this is the day the 
Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it this morning. Amen. Life may not be altogether what you think it ought to be today. It may not be perfect uh, in your life today, but I got good news for you. Amen. You're in the place where the life changer, amen, comes to be. Amen. So he's able to touch you and bless you in any way that you need today. Amen. That's a new song as far as I know. First time I've heard it. Amen. They run practiced it this morning and, uh, after they got here. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So good to have you out this morning. Amen. All of our visitors and new uh, first time people here. Glad to have you this morning. Amen. Good to have some of mine and Wendy's. Some of our best friends. Amen. Amen. This is Wendy's other partner in crime sitting beside her. Amen. This morning. Brother Darrell and Sister Lisa Miller from up at Clara. Amen. Glad to have them come this morning be in service with us. You that are here, Bishop, this morning. Amen. Glad to have you in God's house. We just want you to get in and worship the Lord with us this morning. Coming off of three nights. Amen. A tremendous revival and preaching and moving in every night. The altars were filled and God just blessed us in a great way in these services. Amen. These young men preached their hearts out this week. Amen. I told you last week you get three young men, one old man in the middle and another young one after a while. Amen. So we'll get through this morning. We'll get through the geriatric part of the revival this morning. Amen. The old man of the bunch. Amen. I have enjoyed these young ministers. Amen. God, Brother Ross preached his heart out, and Elliot came in here. Amen. And preached Brother Kyle done a tremendous message last night. Amen. Tonight, Brother Aaron is going to preach for us in our night service. Looking forward to what God has given to him. So, amen. It's been a great week. Amen. But today's a brand new day. I mean, we just want you to get in and worship the Lord tonight. Amen. Remember, coming up in two weeks, we're going to have homecoming. On the 17th of, of March, uh, Brother Gerald Wally will be ministering that morning in our morning service. We'll have lunch after service that day, and then we won't have any night service. Next Saturday morning, uh, about 8 o'clock, if you can come, we're going to have a work day here and get cleaned up on the outside and the inside to get ready for homecoming. So work day next Saturday if you can come and help, amen, on the end of uh, like the 17th, we will have uh, our homecoming service here. So remember those things coming up pretty shortly. Amen. If our ushers will come and receive our offering this morning, give you a chance to give as unto the Lord today. Amen. As you've been so faithful in your giving, amen, if you continue to give, God will continue to bless Amen. Also, Brother Rich, would you stand and pray over this altar offering this morning? Oh, Father, we're so grateful for your blessing, for what you're doing in our midst, for what you're doing for our people. And we just, we just thank you for this opportunity to give back to you somewhat that we have. And we pray that you take it and bless it and multiply it for your use. In Jesus' name, amen. And worship as you give this morning. Amen. Keep your mind on the Lord this morning. And whatever you have need of in this house today, amen, he's able to minister. He's able to do whatever you amen, have need of today. Just speak to him right where you are and allow him to speak to you.
know what? That song talks about giving him our best. But he wants to also give you his best. I mean, he wants to in turn give you all the good things. Scripture said it is the Father's good pleasure to give the kingdom unto his children. And when he wants to give you all that heaven has to offer, Man, the scripture said, I will pour out windows, or I will open up windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon you. But you are not even able to receive them all. Amen. All he wants is you to just become available. You know, if I had a thousand dollars and I was going to give to Brother Kyle. If I didn't have his address, if I didn't know where he lived or know how to get a hold to him, how could I ever bless him with what I had to give him? But if Brother Kyle made himself available and said, hey, this is where I live, this is my address, if you want to mail it to me, every how you want to get it to me, this is where I can be found. How many times does God want to give us good things? And how many times has God got blessings lined up for us that we're just not available for? I mean, we may be all somewhere else doing our thing or doing what we want to do or, 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 or out, out in left field just not listening to His voice when He begins to speak to us. But all God wants is for you just to be available and just surrender yourself to Him. Amen. And he can give you all the good things that heaven has to offer. Amen. Give this praise to him a hand this morning. And a tremendous God. They always do. Amen. They work probably harder this week than most of us. Amen. I appreciate their dedication and all that they do. Our kids can be dismissed. This glory is going to take uh, uh, the, the uh, children's church, Brother Ross and Sister Lindsay. While they're gone, Sister Heather in Brooklyn has destiny has the nursery this morning. Amen. So we just want you to uh, get right in. Those of you that are left, if you'd like to turn with me to Mark chapter 5. Just a few minutes this morning. <coughs> God helping me. I don't know what's happened to my voice. I reckon it faded out this weekend or something. Just pray that the Lord would touch my voice today or let it go on out where you can get out early, one of the two. <laughs> Amen. I guess that will be ever which way you pray will be up to you, I reckon. I know which way some of them are going. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Scripture says to let your, let your request be made known unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 5 this morning. Last Sunday night, Brother Kyle preached on our youth service. And I'm going to book in what he preached. He preached a story right out of the middle of another story. I already had this message from last week. I just wondered how far he was going to go and get the rest of my message for this week. And I was going to, uh, this was kind of what I had lined up for Wednesday night and we didn't make it. Brother Rich stepped in and done a tremendous job. And, uh, the testimonies were fantastic for the other night. And then, and then as I began to, I wanted to go a different direction this morning. I've had a message that has been burning on my heart on the cross and, and, and the working of the cross. And, but God just wouldn't let me get away from this message this morning. Amen. If I was to have a title today, it would simply be, Don't Be Surprised. And don't be surprised. Mark chapter 5, verse number 35. We will start reading there. It said, And while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, <coughs> Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, or, or Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and he seeth the tumult 
and them that wept and, 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 and wailed greatly. And he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was laying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked uh, for she was of the age of 12 years. Uh, listen to the next part of this verse. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it. And commanded that they should get, that something should be given her to eat. May God add his blessings to his word this morning. This is the beginning of, 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 of the ending of this chapter. The beginning of this chapter uh, tells the story that Jesus had just uh, went over to the land of the gatherings and, and how he had just delivered the man that was named Legion that had legions uh, uh, of demons that were with him and were, were, that were within him. And Jesus delivered him that day and sent him uh, on, uh, on his way back to his own house. Uh, the people that were there, they constructed strained him to get back in his ship and, and go back where he came from. And in the great miracle that just happened, uh, amen, instead of drawing them closer and pulling them closer to where they should have been, closer, uh, amen, to a relationship with Jesus uh, or accepting the miracle that just happened, it pushed them even further away from him. And the Bible said that he got into the ship uh, and went back, uh, amen, to the other place. Uh, amen, verse 27, he departed uh, and began to, uh, and begin to publish in the capitalists uh, the great things that Jesus uh, had done for him uh, and all men did marvel uh, they marveled because they had saw the miracle that Jesus done with the man uh, in Gadara uh, verse 21 said and when Jesus was passed over again by ship to the other side uh, much people gathered to him uh, and there was not under the sea uh, and then we are in introduced uh, to a young man in this scripture uh, named Jairus. Uh, Jairus came to Jesus as he got out uh, of that ship uh, and said, Master, would you come and lay hands on my daughter uh, because she is about to die. Uh, and Jesus turned uh, and began to make his way uh, to Jairus' house. Uh, and as they were walking in the multitude, uh, the people were following him uh, and they threw on him. Now I want you to get this picture for just a moment. This is a desperate dad that his daughter is about to die. But he has found the master. He has heard of the miracles that Jesus has done. He has found where Jesus was. No doubt Brother Kyle, he was waiting on that ship to come back in. He had been waiting on Jesus to return from the other side. And now we see the picture. Amen. No doubt Jairus is thinking, well, it's going to be okay now because I've got Jesus and he's on the way to my house. He already made the statement, if you will just come lay your hand on her, she will be healed. What faith he had, what trust he had if Jesus could only get there. They began the journey to Jairus' house. And in the middle of their journey, no doubt they're walking, maybe having conversation between them and then your sermon in the middle of all this picks up. Jesus is walking. His disciples were beside him. Jairus is beside him. And he stops. He stops and looks around. And he said, who touched me? Peter said, Lord, I'm not going to re-preach your message. Peter said, Lord, the multitude throng you. <coughs> They're pushing you from every side. 
They're all, uh, they're all around you, and yet you've heard me. Yeah, you, you used this scripture b -b before. How about the multitude will never come in? Brother Kyle, I'm out of way. You can see for a minute. Hey, man, I want to just go ahead and throw this in. There is a difference between a touch and a touch. In this scripture, that is two different words that is used two different ways. There are there were people all around him that day that were touching him. They made contact with him, but nothing happened when they made incidental contact with Jesus. That is one Hebrew word that means to bump into. It means to have contact with. But Jesus said, who touched me? That is another Hebrew word that means to grab hold to for a purpose. It means to latch on to with no intent of letting go. They were touching him and bumping him and and all around him. But all of a sudden he stopped and said somebody has touched me. There was a little woman that made her way through that crowd and got to where he was and said but if I can only touch the hem of his garment I know I'll be made whole and she didn't bump him she didn't accidentally run into him but she intentionally grabbed a hold to him with her faith and with her hand and Jesus stops and turns who touched me Lord Lord the, the multitude throned you and you asked who touched you and Jesus said, no, someone touched me because I felt the virtue when it went out of me. And the Bible said that when she saw that she was in no way hid, she just kind of bowed herself down. You can be, you see, she kind of bowed herself down. And Jesus looks down at her. And then 38 years Amen. There was a man that had had uh, a, a, a similar condition. He, he had been crippled for 38 years and laid by the pool. There was a man with a withered hand and had had it for many, many years. And he came in contact with Jesus and he was healed. This woman for 12 years had had an issue of blood. Brother Kyle said it, amen, no doubt the situation she was living in. And now after all these years and nothing left, had nothing left to give, nothing left, no help could be found. She finally touches the hem of his garment. The conversation continues between Jesus and that woman. But remember who's standing beside him. Remember the journey that they're on. Remember, Jairus is probably standing there thinking, would you hurry? And then my daughter is about to die. And here this woman, how greedy she must have been. Oh, she wasn't thinking about nobody else but herself. She, had, she wasn't thinking, oh, she, she didn't know. She, did, did, did she not see him walking with me? Did she not see that we was in a hurry to get to my house? I got good news for you today. I don't think Jesus ever gets in a hurry to get anywhere huh? because he knows the reason why he's going. Huh? Amen, Lazarus. Huh? Amen, they called for him huh? and he abode two days huh? and it took him two more days huh? and he got there and Mary and Martha said, huh? if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Huh? But he didn't get any hurry. Huh? He didn't get upset. Huh? He didn't get beside himself. Huh? Amen, he knows huh? the miracle that's coming. Huh? He knows what's down the road. Uh, he knows what's going to happen when he gets there. Oh, but you, oh, but, but. <coughs> come on, Lord. <laughs> come on, Lord. And he's standing there still having a conversation with this little woman that had an issue of blood that had just been healed. Had just been healed. You see, it does not matter this morning that we just came out of revival. It does not matter this morning that the altars have been filled every night. I've got some more good news for you. He's got time for you this morning. 
He, he's got time for you this morning. It may look like a desperate situation for your neighbor. It may look like the person behind you. And you may think, well, there's got to be greater needs in this room than mine. There's got to be people that need him more than I do today. My friend, your need is just as important to him. And he will stop and give attention to you. He will stop and spend time with you. I believe that's the reason that he came in here this morning was just to spend a little time with you and I just to stop and allow us to give amen a little bit of praise and a little bit of worship so that he could release a little bit of virtue into this house and meet your needs amen he had time he had time for the little woman knowing that Jairus' daughter was about to die Jesus finishes the conversation with that young woman. He said, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. And they turn up and be like a popcorn machine this morning, just up and down. All of a sudden, Jesus turns to Jairus, and they continue their journey. They continue their journey. And here comes another. Here comes another. Comes running to where Jesus and Jairus was. And he said, why trouble the master anymore? Your daughter, your daughter's dead. Just, just let him go. Your daughter's dead. The Bible said that before Jairus could say a word, before he could have a salt, before his faith could be turned in a different direction, Jesus turned at him and said, she's not dead. She only sleeps. Only believe. Uh, the messenger, I don't care what the messenger, I don't remember who it was in this house last night. I don't care what the messenger may have been planning in your mind and in your heart. I don't care what the messenger, amen, Paul said, there was a messenger of Satan that was sent to buffet me. Amen, you may be in this room this morning and the messengers may keep coming and they may keep bringing you bad news they may keep telling you that nothing's going to happen they may keep telling you that he's too busy that he doesn't care but let me tell you in this house this morning that he's still in control and if you'll only believe he can still do whatever you ask him don't believe the messenger don't believe the message you stand on what you know to be true you stand on who you know that he is. I know who he is. And I know what he can do. No matter what the messenger tells you. As long, as long as you're still walking with Jesus. <laughs> everything's going to be all right. Uh, I ain't got time to preach all this. I got a long way to go. Uh, as long as you're walking with Jesus. He looked at Jairus and said, she's not dead. She's only sleeping. Only believe. At this point, he had a choice. He could believe the facts or he could believe the Lord. The facts was, Chief, that she was dead. The facts was, according to human knowledge, she was not breathing anymore and had not breathed for some time because the messenger had time to get from Jairus' house to here. My thoughts was, and y'all know how my little brain works, it probably wasn't very long after Jairus left before that young lady died because the messenger had time to get from his home to where he was waiting on Jesus to get out of that ship. Uh, I'm pretty inquisitive. Don't you imagine? Don't you imagine that messenger hated? Hated to bring that message. Don't you, can't you imagine? This was probably his top servant. And then this was probably the one that he trusted the most. But he had to come to his master and say, your your daughter, your daughter's dead. 
Mama, don't trouble the master, but she's not dead, she only sleeps. You only believe. The Bible said that he turned to that multitude behind him. And I don't understand all of this part of the scripture, but it said that he, all of them, he told to stay behind. And he took with him Peter, James, and John, and Jairus, and the servant. Don't forget in this story that there's a servant that was there the day that she died. <laughs> we don't read one more thing about him. We don't read any more about his story. But no doubt he never left his master's side from that point on. Here comes Jesus, Jairus, Peter, James, and John, and the servant. And they walk up to the house. And the Bible said that there was great tumult. It was chaos. It was chaos. The, the mourners were, were weeping and wailing. And Jesus walks in the middle of of the tumult. They ain't got time to preach that this morning, but he doesn't care how bad the tumult is at your house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Preacher, we don't have tumult at our house. We don't we don't have problems at our house. We're we're Pentecostal. Everything's good at our house. I don't know about you sometime there's some tumult at my house. Amen. There's been times at my house there's been some tumult. <laughs> hey, I ain't going over here. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes there's some tumult at your house. You see, it's the devil's job. It's the devil's job to stir up tumult. Uh, I ain't got time to go into what that word is. I can stay a while right there. It is his job to stir up trouble. and pro It is his job to stir up hate and discontent. It is his job. Jesus said this. Uh, I have come. The, the thief only comes but for three things. Uh, that is to steal and to kill and to destroy. Uh, he will steal your joy. Uh, he will kill your family. Uh, he will destroy your ministry. Uh, he will destroy your home. He will destroy your marriage. He'll switch your children. He'll do anything that he can to create tumult in your life. But I'm not just full of good news this morning. He's a God that'll walk right in the middle of your troubles, in the middle of your problems. He'll walk in the middle of your situation and walk right up in the middle of it and begin to speak. Let me tell you again, he'll come right in the middle of your problem. He'll come right in the middle of the worst thing you ever had. He'll walk right up in the middle of it. Mama, I'm going to tell you. He'll walk right in the middle of it all. And he doesn't walk in the middle of it. He don't walk in the middle of it. Uh, here, here's where I get sometimes. I want him to get in the middle of my tumult and just sit down with me and just tell me I understand. It's going to be okay. You didn't do nothing. Holding people around you. You ever got one of them pity party kind of places? And you'd love for him to just come in where you are and put his arm around you and pull you up and say, you're going to be all right, darling. I got, I got some bad news to go with my good one. He ain't no pity party kind of God. When he walks into your tumult, he didn't come to partake of being in your situation. He walked into it to change it. He did not walk into it to, to partake. He did not walk into the mourning to mourn with them. He didn't walk into the wailing to wail with them. He had already told him that she ain't dead. She's only asleep. I've come to wake her up. Can I tell you, I hope, it, I hope this week that some of you in this revival, if you ain't got nothing else, I hope you got woke up. I hope you realize that time 
time is short and the devil is trying to destroy everything that God is trying to build. But I've got good news for you. He just keeps on walking in one more time. He just keeps walking in again and changing it all over. He walks in and the waving and the waving was there. And when he was come, he saith unto them in verse 39, Why make you this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead. She's only asleep. Anybody in here besides me, you ever been guilty of building a mountain out of a molehill? Amen. Just had her in here, so I'll pick on you and her. I just got half of you. He'll come in and he'll put something between you and her that is so insignificant that it don't amount to hill beans. And he'll turn you against her and her against you. And before long, y'all will be hanging out back and forth. And something that God intended for, to, for it to be nothing more. And I ain't got time to preach this either. God don't intend for everything that enters your life to pull you down and knock you down. Sometimes it's just meant to, for you to see where you are and to see the power that you have inside of you. But uh, Jesus said, why are y'all making a big deal out of this? And they looked around at him like he lost his mind. Why, why make you this big a do? She's not dead. She's only sleeping. And he says, the Bible said in the next verse that they laughed him to scorn. Can you think now, remember the servant that was with Jairus and walked back with Jesus? But there he probably thought, no, I was there when she died. I was there. I was there when she took her last breath. And now you're saying she's only a sleeper. That don't make no sense. And what I preached to you last week about the will of God, that nine times out of ten, anything that happens in your life that is a miraculous thing from God, anything in your life that is God's will to grow you, and it ain't and it ain't going to make sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going they laughed him to scorn they laughed him to scorn in verse 40 but but when he had put them all out see there comes a time that the weeping and the wailing and the wailing and all that's got to be over it's got to be done Amen. You want to weep and wail? Jesus said, if you want to weep and wail, and you don't want to believe, go outside and weep and wail. Amen. Because there comes a time when you get desperate enough. And I'm going to preach just a second on desperation. Some of us, uh, amen, have been to a place uh, of desperation before that if God didn't do it, it wasn't going to be done. If God didn't heal her, it wasn't going to be healed. If God didn't fix that finance, uh, it wasn't going to be healed. If God didn't fix that job situation, it wasn't going to be changed. And there come a time that you had to believe him or you had to let him go. Jesus. It said that when he put them all out, he took the father and the mother and Peter and James and John and walked into that room where that young lady was. And in verse 41, he walked over to her and took her by the hand and said, young lady, I say unto you, arise. And straightway, which means immediately, the young lady arose. She arose and walked for she was the age of 12 years. Look at verse 43. And they brought, he brought them out of the room again and commanded that they should give her something to eat. But notice what happens then. All those weepers and wailers 
And all of those that doubted and all those that laughed him to scorn was standing in astonishment. He, and I want to talk to you for just a few minutes and I'll let you go. He is a God of astonishment. That means that they had been brought to a place that they were outside of their normal reasoning. That word astonishment means to be brought to a place like you were in a trance. Like something has overtaken your reasonable faculties. The only way you can ever believe God for some of the miracles in your life that you are asking God for is you're going to have to get above the reasonable faculties of your mind. You've got to get above what this physical man can believe. You've got to get above what this physical man can have faith for. You've got to get above what this physical mind can comprehend and understand and know that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above more than you could ever ask or think or comprehend. He is able. He is able. He is able. You got to get above the reality of the situation. She was dead. And now she's sitting at the table and she's eating. That scripture that he used the other night about Lazarus. No, the Evans preached that out chapter the other night. I preached it about a month ago. One chapter, Lazarus is dead. And he's in a tomb. And he's been there for four days. And he is wrapped in grave clothes. And the next chapter opens up and says that they sat at the table and eat. And Lazarus who was dead was one of those that sat at the table. Amen. Yeah. <coughs> Human reasoning. <laughs> Human reasoning, Brother Rich. <laughs> A dead man can't sit at the table. A dead girl can't walk out and sit down. But the fact of the matter was she was never, Jesus said she's not dead. She's asleep. Some of you have situations in your life this morning that you think, oh, yeah, the boss, yeah, the boy. Some of you have situations in your life that you think are hopeless and you think it's, that there will be no change. You think that it's dead. You think that there's no way that it's going to come back. And according to your human reasoning, you cannot expect that. But if you can understand that we serve a God of astonishment and get to a place that you can believe above that because that prayer you've been praying, it ain't dead. It's only asleep. It's just waiting on the master uh, to walk in the room uh, and call it out by name. Uh, he's just waiting on the master uh, to walk in uh, and take it by the hand and say it's time for a change. Pretty good foundation, and now I'm going to preach. <laughs> Why are we surprised? When God does these great things. Huh? I've been here a little over two years now. And when I got here the first time, the first thing I heard some of you say was, we're praying God to grow our church. Are you surprised today? Huh? You got them things in your life for your children? Some of you got children sitting on the pew with you. Some of you got, got answers to prayer that you've been praying. Sometimes, Brother Kyle, when God moves like we ask him to do, we, well, I, were we really expecting him to do that when we prayed? Are we, are we surprised that God does exactly what we ask him to do? They were. They were astonished. They were astonished because he done what Jairus asked him to do. He 
said, Lord, if you will just lay your hand on her, she'll live. All he done, I almost said this while ago, but I decided I'd wait. He didn't even say, he didn't say one prayer. He walked in that room. He didn't even pray over that girl. J. Iris didn't say, Lord, you got to come pray this big long prayer. And you, he said, if you will touch her. Oh, all you got to do is touch her and she'll live. So what did he do? He walked in the room and they just touched her. And she stood up. And what? He done exactly what J. Iris asked him to do. And he walks out and everybody's, oh, man, don't be, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. John chapter 14 and verse number 12 tells the story where the disciples were out on the boat uh, and Jesus is in the hinder part of sleep uh, and, and they wake him up and he walks out and he says, peace be still. And the Bible said that they all marveled at what manner of man that even the winds and the waves control. Listen to why he can do those things. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. He says, all power is given unto me from my Father in heaven and earth. All power is given unto me. How can he raise up that, that young girl from the dead? Because all power had already been given to him. Now I want to turn to this for just a minute. There's some things that God's wanting to do. There's some things that God is wanting to bring to pass in your life. And I, got, I, I just come to warn you today, when God does it, don't be surprised. All power is given unto me. And then there's another place a little bit before that, that he said these things that I do, and greater things shall you do because I go to my Father. When God begins to do these things, amen, don't be surprised what he does. Amen, don't be surprised what he does in this house. Don't be surprised what he's about to do. Amen, as soon as I get an opportunity, I've got some pictures and some graphs and some figures and some stuff to throw at you. Amen, I'm fixing to give you some numbers for some things that we've got to have and it's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind. That big old building out there ain't going to pop up for a little bit of change in my pocket. Amen. Them Sunday school rooms that we got to have in the back, they're not just going to say poof and be there. <laughs> we. So, so when you see these things come before you, you're going to say, oh, ain't no way we can do that. You know what you, oh, go ahead and, I can I meddle just a minute. Don't be one of them that laughs Jesus to scorn. Oh, y'all forgive me. I didn't know this was coming in right here. It fits like a sock. My brother said it fits like socks on a rooster, so let's pray. When you see, when you see the plan of God, and you see what, what when you, are, 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 are we just going to laugh him? To scorn them. Oh, they ain't, you know, there ain't no way. Oh, Jay, I was going to say, Lord, don't bother because she's dead. But Jesus said, only believe. Amen. Don't. When you see what God wants to do, amen. And I'm just going to go ahead and just meddle just a little bit deeper. Amen. Jay, I was, the whole time he was walking, amen, he had to have the faith that the man that he had by the hand when he got there was going to be able to do the thing that he told him he would do. As long as you walk with him, uh, as long as you that whole way home, uh, he was probably saying, uh, I don't know uh, how she died, uh, but I can tell you how she's going to be raised. Uh, I don't know what happened, uh, but I know what's about to happen. Uh, I can't tell you uh, how it's going to be, but I can tell you that he's going to do it. 
Don't be surprised. Oh, don't be surprised what he does in this church. Don't be surprised what he wants to do with some of you. <laughs> well, I go on to that next verse in Mount Mark chapter 6. <laughs> Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised what he wants to do with you. Some of you are walking in a brand new call. Some of you are walking in a brand new way. Don't let it shock you. <laughs> when it gets a hold of you, a young lady standing right here this week, standing there praying, she's about this big round. I say it was something that got a hold of her, got inside of her, and she just started jumping and jumping and running in place. And I stood there thinking, my Lord, I'd be so tired right now. He'd have to call the ambulance to pick me up out of the floor. She just jumped and she jumped and she jumped and she ran and she ran and, and she ran. Something got a hold of her. Something got inside of her. Some of these people around this front, uh, hey amen. Uh, somebody come by, Sister Sheila, the other night said, I thought she was going to leave here. And she said, I could have. Hey, something, don't be surprised uh, when something gets a hold of you that you never had before because you, uh, you've been asking for it, haven't you? We've been asking. If he didn't want Jesus to lay hands on that girl, let me throw out this. You know, all these things got a warning label on. I'm going to give you a warning label this morning. If you don't want him to turn your world upside down, don't ask him. It was said 15 dozen times out of that pulpit this week. God is not in the business in this day and time of playing around. The time of playing around is over. Don't this thing is winding down and God is as serious about his church as he has ever been before. So if you don't want to be anointed, don't ask him. If you don't want your life to be turned upside down, don't ask him. If you don't want him to lay hands on you and heal your life, don't ask him. Because he's in the business of performing the things that he promised that he would do. Chapter 6 and verse 1. And he went out from thence and came, this is right after, he healed that one that little girl and came to his own country. And his disciples followed him. And then the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were, what? They were astonished at his doctrine. From, the, from whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this uh, that is given unto him that he might, uh, that such mighty works uh, were wrought by his hands? Uh, when we remodeled, that will not be in the floor. <laughs> Amen. Just thought I'd let you know. They were astonished again. Just hearing him teach and seeing his miracles. They were astonished and they said, from whence does he have this power? Let me take you back to where he said, the same power that I have and the things that I do shall you do and greater than these things going to other. Is this not the God? No, oh God, I can't have time to preach this. Is that a power? Is that ain't the cow that I used to know that they're preaching today? Huh? Is that ain't Philip that I used to know? Is that ain't Ashley that, 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 that I ain't a business? Is that not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James? That they went through his whole ancestry. They went a long way to put him down. <laughs> uh, I ain't got time to preach that either. 
and are not his sisters here with us. We know he don't know good family. We, we know where he come from. We know where he used to live. And now he's in here teaching. And he's got this power. And he's got this authority. Now let me turn this around a little bit. They did know where he come from. And they knew his mama. And they knew where he was from. And they knew he was only from Nazareth. But they had just recognized that he was different than everybody else. Because they said, what power does he speak with? With what wisdom did he get this? Go on to the next verse. But Jesus saith unto them that a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. Amen. I ain't got time to preach. I need to go on to the next one. And he could do no mighty work, save he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled. I got some news for you. The marveling goes both ways. They marveled at what such a man that he was, but that he said he marveled at their unbelief. How could they see a dead girl raised? How could they see a maniac delivered? How could they see the miracles that they had saw and still and still and still had no he preached last night unbelief. And still. Why well, how, how much have you seen? Man. Every Sunday morning, there's a little baby that sits right here on this pew that the doctor said ought not be here. But you know what? That little chunky thing, you? they told her in here every Sunday morning, and you speak to her, and she just lights up the room. You come too late to tell me that he's, he don't heal. You come too late to tell me that he don't deliver. You come too late to tell me that he ain't who he says that he is. He is God. He said he marveled at their unbelief. And he went around the village teaching. Go on to the next verse. And he called unto him the twelve. Oh boy. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. Go on to the next verse. And commanded them that they should take nothing on their journey save a staff, nor script, nor bread, nor money in their purse. Go on to the next verse. But be shod with their sandals and not to put on two coats. Don't take I'm going to put this in Perry County terms this morning. Some of the things God's asked you to do, don't worry about how he's going to do it. Don't worry about how you're going to finance it. Don't worry about how you're going to look. Don't worry about any other things that goes along with what he has called you to do. All he's saying for you to do is go. Go. But he did say, don't put on two coats. You know what that means? If you put on one coat to be warm and you put on another coat just in case you can't move. I hate to be bundled up. I can go up north and it'd be 12 degrees below zero and they'd be walking out there with them big old coveralls on and, and they look like a Michelin man and I got on my wonder look. I cannot stand to be bundled up. I can't deal with it. If I can't move, you know why I take them coats off? Because I get sweaty and they start sticking to me. We get so bundled up in our own thoughts and our own ways of thinking how God's going to do in our life what he promised us he was going to do. But he told his disciples, don't worry about what you're going to take. Don't worry about how it's going to be. He said, just don't leave here so cumbered up that you can't fulfill the mission. I had time to preach that another hour I would. And he said unto them, In what place you, you, that you shall enter into an house, there abide till you depart from that place. <laughs> I 
and, and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you when you depart then shake the dust off your feet for a testimony unto them verily I say unto you it shall not be tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment rather than that day don't worry about results of the message don't worry don't worry about what happens when you test. Don't worry about what happens when you give your testimony. Don't worry about what happens when you sing your song. Don't worry about what happens when you teach your class. That's, that's God's business. Man. He told his disciples. He said, when you go give them the word, if they receive it, that's great. But if they don't, you shake the dust off for a testimony against them because they'll come a day they'll wish they would help. Go on to the next verse. And they went out and preached that every man should repent. And they cast out devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and they healed them. That's the last one. And they healed them. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised what God does through you. We've been sent for. We have been commissioned. We have been sent out. He sent them two by two. I got good news for you again this morning. You ain't going to have to go by yourself. And then he's called us as a church. He's called us as a church in this community to be. Just don't be surprised. Brother Kyle used that scripture last night. And I wasn't going to re-preach two of his messages back to back. But the last scripture that he used last night said that you shall take up servants and they will not harm you. You shall lay that signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Don't be surprised. When God does exactly what he said he was going to do. Don't, 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 don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when you sit your family on the pew with you. Don't be surprised when your finances explode. Don't be surprised when your business just takes off. That's his promise. That's his promise. You got a choice this morning. I'm going to make it real simple if she comes to the, to the piano. You can either laugh at him or you can believe him, but you can't do both. But Mary, that's pretty, I don't laugh at him. Do you believe him? Do, do you believe him? The ones that didn't believe, he put out. There wasn't no middle ground. But Craig, he didn't say, if you're a Christian, you can stay here. And if you're in this, you can come. Either you believed a hundred, you believed in him or you didn't. Are you believing for that miracle this morning? Are you believing for that situation this morning? Are you believing for that thing in your life? Don't, don't, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when you look up. Don't be surprised when he walks in the middle of your tumult and grabs your situation by the hand and said, get up and get out of this place. You don't belong here. You don't belong in a place where a dead girl lays. You belong at a table where you can be spread, where you can be delivered, where you can have the thing. There are there's some places that you don't belong. Let God take you by the hand and pull you out of that tumult. For I am a God of my word. For 
I am a God that will deliver on a promise that I have made unto you. If God would only trust me, say if God, I will move in your midst. If God would only believe in me, I will walk in the middle of your situation and change that thing in your life. Say if God, if you will trust me, I will deliver you. If you will trust me, I will prosper you. If you will trust me, I will bring you into higher heights and deeper depths in me than ever before. If you will trust me, said the Lord, I will bring blessings to you that you will not contain. Be not strange, saith the Lord, when I do these things among you. For in this hour, I will reveal myself unto you, saith God. Shut the boy, Oh God, reveal yourself this morning. In the name of Jesus, stand all over this building. What's in your life today? What's in your life today? Christian, what's in your life today? This was not a message for the sinners. This was not a message for those that are lost. This was a message for the church. This was a message for you that God can walk into wherever you are and make a difference. He will make a difference. He will deliver you. He will set you free. He will heal you. He will, he will advance you. He will prosper you. Whatever you need today. Amen. Just don't be surprised. Don't be surprised because it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I wonder who will be first this morning. And what they sang earlier and what God gave me earlier was no accident. Who will be first to say, Lord, I just want to receive. I just want to receive. I wouldn't sit there this morning. I wouldn't sit there. If I had a business, if I had a job, if I had finance problems, if I had family problems, if I had lost children, I wouldn't sit there. And so I would come and say, God, here I am. Here I am. Just pour it out on me. Oh, oh, you got to Oh, just pour it out on me. Pour it out on me this morning, God. Come on, throw your hands up and receive it this morning. God, I receive across this room. God, I receive this morning. This morning, God, Lord, across this front and in these pews. God, I receive today. Lord, we won't be surprised for we understand you're working. We understand you're moving. We understand that you're coming. We're expecting you to do great things. We're expecting you to deliver. We're expecting you to heal. We're expecting you to do all those things that you promised. Oh God, today, 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 today turn the situation. Today I pray you walk in the middle of some problems. I pray you walk in the middle of some tumult. I pray you walk in the middle of some weeping. You walk in the middle of some mama's tears. You walk in the middle of some mama's prayers. You walk in the middle of some finance. You walk in the middle of some family problems. You walk in the middle of some lost children. And that you move and that you speak to them. And that you touch them with your mighty hand today. Oh God. Oh God, today. Oh the boho shanda boho, yada boho shiyata Oh God, today. 